welcome to Study Topics. This week we are covering spinal cord injury special topics. Now these special topics are going to be a little bit unique. We're going to be going over the zone of partial preservation, spastic bladder, and flaccid bladder. Now how we're going to go through this is you are going to fill in the blanks or sometimes pick the correct wording in the sequence. We'll then talk about it and uh, you'll leave here with a bunch more information in your brain. So let's start. For the zone of partial preservation, we have three fill in the blanks questions. Now feel free to pause. I'm going to give you about 20 seconds to go through these. Alrighty, let's go over the answer. So the zone of partial preservation is a very interesting concept within the Asia scale. So, you know, there may be a dermatome area below the sensory level and myotomes below the motor level that remain partially innervated, right? And this is known as a zone of partial preservation. Now, it's known or defined as the most caudal segment with some sensory, and it defines the extent of that zone of partial preservation. The key point here that I want you to take for your exam is that the zone of partial preservation is only ever referenced when describing a complete injury. And remember, and if you need to go back and watch the Asia video from last week, the only level of the Asia scale that is a complete injury is the Asia A. All right, let's go on and talk about the neurogenic bladder. Now, with the neurogenic bladder, we have two different types. We have the flaccid or hypotonic bladder, and this will result from a peripheral nerve injury or a spinal cord injury at the level of the S2, S4. We could also have a spastic neurogenic bladder, and this happens with a brain injury or spinal cord injury above T12. Now, another video you might want to go check out here is learning about the different types of incontinence because each of these types of neurogenic bladders um, have a certain type of incontinence that they're more likely associated with. So the flaccid or hypotonic neurogenic bladder is more often associated with overflow incontinence. And again, if you need to learn more about overflow incontinence, go look at our incontinence video. We also have this spastic bladder, and this has to do more with that overactive or urge incontinence. Okay, let's do a little bit of a quiz here to see if you understand spastic bladder first. So I'll give you 20 seconds to choose the correct word, above or below, will or will not, in the sequence. Okay, let's review the answers. So in spastic bladder, these injuries occur above the conus medullaris. The messages will continue to travel between the bladder and the spinal cord since the reflex arc is intact, okay? That's the key thing, the arc is still intact. Now the treatment for this, patients may help themselves trigger emptying by doing something called tapping, um, but the bladder cannot be trained to empty on its own. So ultimately what needs to happen is they need to have either intermittent catheterization or a Foley drainage. Now let's go on to flaccid bladder. I'll give you 20 seconds to fill in these blanks and choose the correct answer in the sequence. All right, let's review. So the flaccid bladder is caused by injuries to the conus and or cauda equina, okay? Messages will not continue to travel between the bladder and the spinal cord because the reflex art is damaged. Okay, that is the key here. The bladder loses the ability to empty reflexively and will continue to fill. So ultimately the treatment for this is a Foley catheter. All right, well, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for joining me. 
Thanks for checking out Study Topics. My name is Caitlin, founder of PT Exam Prep. Our goal is to help you prepare for your upcoming licensing exam. So please subscribe to our channel to make sure you're up to date with all of our newest posts.